St. Francis Xavier, about whom we are going to learn today, was the member of a religious order called the Jesuits. In fact, the Jesuits were even invited by Mughal Emperor Akbar. Here in this picture, you can see all of them together. Akbar is sitting here, whereas the Jesuits are sitting there. St. Francis Xavier came to India from Lisbon. After he came to India, his one and only mission was to spread the word of Christianity. So, what did he do? He started preaching to the sick people who were there in Goa at that point of time. He did so for six months. In fact, the people in Goa really liked him. He was very clean and he used to roam around with that bell. So, why was he carrying that bell? Well, he was carrying that bell because he was inviting other people and other children to teach them about Christianity. These children will later on spread the word of Christianity as well. Next, he went to Kerala and he helped poor people there, poor Christian people who did not even have their own churches. So, how did he help them? He helped them by building churches along with them. And so, as you can see here, he is helping this man build a church. So, that is what St. Francis Xavier was doing. So, as we just saw, he reached Goa in the year 1542. After reaching Goa, he started helping the Paravar community in building various churches. Other than that, he also spent his time with Katisars, Mukkuvars and Pattam Katiyar communities who also lived on the shores of eastern coasts of India. So, he was helping the people who were living there. Next, what he did is that he asked Goa scholars to translate the hymns and verses of the Bible so that the common people could also understand what was written in the Bible and could learn from it. As we learned from the video, he even built 40 churches and catechized children and local inhabitants. In fact, he was able to convert inhabitants of over 30 villas or 30 villages. So, these were the things that St. Francis Xavier was able to do. Even in this painting here, which was made by Andre Renoso, you can see St. Francis Xavier preaching about his religion to the people of Goa. Now, he died on 2nd December 1552 in China. And in Goa, you can find the casket of St. Francis Xavier in the Basilica of Bom Jesus, which is there in Goa and in India. And a lot of people visit this place as well. Next, we come to another Christian missionary. Who was this? This was Robert de Nobili. He joined the Society of Jesus, which consisted of religious men. So, while he was studying, while he was pursuing his education, he got to know about such a society and he joined it. The people in this society, what did they do? They preached about Christianity and so Robert de Nobili joined these people. These men would do charity work and go to other parts of the world to spread the teachings of Christianity. Now, Robert de Nobili, he came to India for the same work. He travelled to India and reached the shores of Goa in 1605. Now, the thing is that before this, the Christian people, they were only preaching to the lower class people, the poor people. However, when Robert de Nobili came, what did he do? Well, firstly, he adapted himself to the local customs of India. And why did he do so? Well, he did so in order to connect to the people and their identity easily. So, he connected and he adapted himself according to Indian people so that Indian people could also identify with him easily and learn from him. Other than that, he even used words. He used Tamil and Sanskrit words such as Kovil instead of church or to refer to a place of worship. He even used the word Guru for priest and Veda for the Bible. So, we can understand that he was really adapting and he was learning from Indian traditions. In fact, he even started to resemble an Indian guy. Why? Because he wore a white dhoti and wooden sandals to look like a sannyasi as can be seen from this picture here. He even wore a three-stringed thread 
like the Brahmins. His three stringed thread resembled a cross. However, he wore it and people used to think that he does resemble a Brahmin indeed. You see, that's not the only thing that he did. In fact, he even stopped eating meat as Brahmins did not eat meat either and he started carrying a stick like Hindu monks which you can see in this picture here. Next what he did was that he tried to understand the Indian language which was Tamil and Sanskrit. So he learned Tamil and Sanskrit and lived like a sadhu. He also translated, now that he knew Tamil and Sanskrit, so he translated Christian Psalms into Tamil so that the locals could now also understand the word of Christianity and the doctrines of Christianity in a better way. Now he was also able to convert, because of all of this, he was also able to convert hundreds of lower class men into Christianity. Finally, he also died in 1600 and 56 after preaching for several years. Now, what was the impact of Christianity in India? Well, at that point of time, India was ruled by the Mughals, right? And who was the king back then? Akbar was the king back then. And he was fascinated by various faiths and various religions that were there in that point of time. So what did he do? When he came to know about the Jesuits, he invited them. In fact, he sent a letter and he sent two men his ambassador and an Armenian translator who was a Christian so he could communicate other Christians better, right? So he sent these two people in order to invite a few Jesuits to his place and so they could discuss about Christianity and its various laws. So in this picture, in this painting here, you can see Father Anthony Monserrat and Father Rodolfo Aquaviva along with brother Francis Henriquez in the court of Akbar who can be seen here in Fatehpur Sikri. So after Akbar had invited them to his court, he also invited them to his Ibadat Khana which was there in Fatehpur Sikri. So what was this Ibadat Khana? Well, this was a hall of worship where people of different faiths, different religions would come together and discuss, talk about their particular religion. So now when the Jesuits came in, they also held debates and tried converting Akbar into their faith. However, they failed in front of the well-versed Hindu and Islamic saints. What happened next? Well, more Jesuits came in. They also tried to convert Akbar. However, they also failed into doing so. However, Akbar was very much tolerant towards their faith and he even got married to a Christian lady. However, he was never really ready to convert to their religion. Other than that, Akbar asked Father Jerome Xavier to translate the life of Christ into the Persian language. And what did this develop into? Well, the book was completed by Xavier in 1602. And what was this book called? Well, the text is called Dastane Masi. Next in line came Jahangir, the son of Akbar. He was also tolerant of these people towards their faith. However, just like Akbar, he was also not ready or interested in conversion. Next in line were Shah Jahan and Aurangzeb, who were less supportive of the Jesuits. At this point of time, by the mid-18th century, the Jesuits had developed five churches, one each, in the cities of Marwar, Jaipur, Agra, and there were two in Delhi. Now, you can take a look at both of these paintings. These paintings have been made by Mughal artists, and so you can find touch of Mughal artists in both of these. The first painting here is a Mughal depiction of the birth of Jesus Christ as you can see here. In the next painting you can see Mary's servants wearing saris and dupattas. So you can understand that a Mughal touch has been given to both of these paintings. In the next painting here you can see Virgin Mary wearing a bindi in Mughal art. Virgin Mary is a very important Christian figure. So you can understand how Christianity blends in and merges in with Islam and Mughal thought processes here. So this again gives rise to our Indian composite culture that is still there in India today. In the next picture here, you can see Jahangir holding a picture of 
virgin mary so jahangir was again a mughal ruler whereas he can be seen accepting a new faith christianity so you can understand how tolerant these mughal rulers were right in the next painting we can see christ seated on a throne and people wearing mughal style clothes as we have seen that these paintings have been made by mughal artists so naturally a mughal touch has been given to all of these christian stories in the next painting you can see sufi sheikhs with christian missionary so here is a sufi sheikh and here you can see a christian missionary sitting in one of the rulers courts so take a closer look in this particular painting here you can see mughal style arches right here so you can again understand that these have been painted by mughal artists right and even the clothes are that of indian people so once again the life of jesus christ has been portrayed by mughal artists and muslim artists so as we already know that the mughals took a keen interest in christianity amongst them was akbar who was very fond of quotes from the bible we get to see this because of another historical monument which is the buland darwaza which is there in fatehpur sikri in uttar pradesh so now let's move on and see how akbar showed his interest towards christianity you see this is the main gateway which bears an inscription which is in persian we can also see that in this picture here this is a quote from the bible so we can see how a mughal ruler was tolerable of other faiths and of a very secular nature this is when christianity emerged in india and even in this day and age it is very famous all throughout the world don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon you can also register for free on deltastep.com or download the delta step app and get easy access to more than 5000 amazing videos as per your school syllabus master each topic with our adaptive practice technology get million plus questions with step by step solutions and unlimited mock tests get all your doubts resolved instantly learn via games and get a chance to win amazing prizes like playstations and ipads so at delta step learning is not just fun and easy it's rewarding too so register for free now